Are you a golfer that enjoys the looks and feel of a cavity back iron, but do you want just a little bit more distance? We've got five irons that fit right in between cavity back irons and players distance irons. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell and Danny Farrell. We're both master club fitters at Second Swing. Today we're gonna to be discussing some irons that kind of fit right in between those cavity back irons and those distance players irons. Yeah, the irons we're gonna be testing today are right around 32, 33 degrees aloft. The ones that are a little bit higher, the Apex Pro, the 770, we've seen some explosive distance coming off of those, so should be a good test today. Yeah, so well, what does less loft do? Well, it's going to generate more ball speed yep. and it's going to lower the spin. Right. So if you're a golfer that has a lot of spin with your irons, mm -hmm. you'd like to play a cavity back iron, these are definitely the irons that would fit your game. Absolutely, absolutely. So the irons we're gonna be testing today, we have the Mizuno Pro 223. We just got this in our hands. We're yep. excited to compare this against other models. Mm -hmm. Strixon ZX7, the TaylorMade P770, yep. the Callaway Apex Pro, and the Titleist T100S. Yes. Yep. So with today's test, talk to me about how we're gonna go about it. So we have five heads, mm -hmm. the exact same golf shaft, the Project yep. XLZ 6.5, that's the golf shaft that I play. Okay. We've got the Titleist Pro V1X RCT Bull. Awesome. Oh, that's worked really well with TrackMan inside. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll test them and see how they all compare with regards to look feel, and of course the numbers which you want to see on TrackMan. Yes, absolutely. Let's get to it. So Thomas, this is the newest edition of the channel, the Mizuno 223. Talk to me about looks and feel there. Yeah, I think you bring up an interesting timing because that last shot, I didn't quite catch it perfect. Mm -hmm. it, I felt it just a little bit, but it still had some juice behind it. It still okay. carried 173 yards, okay. even though that was a little bit chunky. So feel, it's forgiving, but it still feels incredibly soft. Okay. Mizuno, you know, they're... Their irons have always felt incredibly soft off the face. Absolutely, and yeah. one thing we have to remember too is their lie angle sits a little bit flatter than everybody else too. Yeah, right. it's about a degree to a degree and a half depending on the manufacturer. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 61 and a half degrees is yeah. a standard lie for a seven iron with mm -hmm. Mizuno. Mm -hmm. um, looking down at it, I like it. I, I think it's uh, I think it's gonna fit in really well for those golfers that are looking for just a little bit more forgiveness but love the looks of a cavity back iron. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a better shot. Yep. Felt good too. Okay, so good showing. Definitely had a good sound from back where I am. Talk to me about kind of overall, once you found it, Talk to me about the Mizuno feel. Yeah, I mean, there's like a little bit of extra behind this club. I can just feel it. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look, turn the, the, the back over, I'm, I'm seeing how there's a little bit of that ledge yeah. there. I know there's like some extra, probably tungsten or something mm -hmm. put back in here okay. just to help with spin and get the ball up in the air a little bit. So right. I could feel it impact that it's just got just a little bit more power behind it mm -hmm. than I know what I'm used to. Now, also the loft's a little bit stronger, 32 right. degrees of loft. So the ones when I hit solid did go a little bit over 180 yards. Mm -hmm. No, normally 178 to 180 is my carry distance with the seven iron. Yeah. So I picked up a little bit of distance there. However, one thing I was interesting was my, my misses were to the right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not used to hitting that one where mm -hmm. I leave it to the right. And a lot of that's gonna play into that line goal True. Usually get to play a line goal at 63 degrees with a seven iron, okay. and this is 61 and a half, because we know the standard lie is about a degree and a half flatter than Correct. what I typically play. Correct. You know, one thing I, you know, you brought up the back cavity in that as well. From back here, it almost looks like an I-210. 
resemblance wise with kind of that tungsten or kind of center of gravity weight in the back there. But yep. it looks very similar from the back at the I-210. We all know the I-210 delivered high launch and high spin as well. Right, and if this performs anything like the I-210, it's gonna be incredible. Cause Absolutely. as being one, it was my, one of my favorite clubs to use the last, I don't know how many years <laughs> it was out, right. but right. you know, yeah. they were gonna replace it here eventually, but I hope it's so. performed well. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it felt really good. Very, very soft feel off the face, clean look to it, mm -hmm. uh, but forgiving. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So let's kind of jump into some numbers here as well. So club speed 89.3, launch angle, we want to keep an eye on that today as well, because we do have you know, some other ones that are at 33 degrees aloft, okay? So we'll kind of keep an eye on the launch. Yep. We'll keep an eye on the spin rate as well, very, very consistent. Even on that one that you struck a little bit heavy, the spin was still right around that 5,500, so yeah. pretty good miss there with that. And that one I struck miss. a little heavy, I think that carried like 173. It okay. was just a little bit shorter overall. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that one right there. Otherwise, we're looking here of carrying the ball, you know, 181, right. 182 is right. what it was my carry distance. Yeah. yeah, so good stuff right across the board. Um, height at 113, dynamic loft at 23.2. Good first start. Yep, good numbers. Let's go into the Apex Pro next okay. from Callaway. So, Tom, is a noticeable <laughs> different sound, yep. right? Talk to me about looks. Does, you know, if I give you that kind of Mizuno side by side, talk to me about that. Yep, so top line first. I'm seeing with the Apex Pro a little thinner okay. compared to the, uh, the Pro 223. Um, and in general, all around, Apex Pro is just a little bit sleeker overall too. Okay. Heel to toe is just a little bit smaller. Well, I'd say the Mizuno Pro 223 is going to be just inspired, just a little bit more confidence looking down at it. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty similar look otherwise, but just as in a slightly smaller package. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, one thing I did notice was sound. Big time. It's, it's crazy how different the sound was between these two. This has just felt very, very soft and buttery yes. off the face. Yep. This is a little louder. Big time. Now, it's not a crazy amount of clickiness to it, but it definitely seems a little clickier than the, the Mizuno did off the face, especially coming yep. from Mizuno to here. And we've seen yep. that trend with tungsten, right? That's the hottest thing in golf is tungsten weight. They have a lot of that in the, in the Callaway Apex Pro, which probably is delivering that clickiness sound that you and I are both hearing today. Yeah. Let's hit three more. Okay. But I'm hitting it better. Definitely spinning less, even though my attack angle is down more with this. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that too. That was a little bit of a low face shot there. Yeah, I'm surprised. It was a low face shot and the spin rate was still a little bit lower. Yep. Yeah, because that's still even lower than where it was with Mizuno. Right. On a miss. Generally, the spin would jump up. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that was hit really well. All right, let's take a look at those numbers. So kind of those numbers we wanted to key in on. Club head speed, ball speed. Now this one, is at 33 degrees. One of the, the few that actually are vaulted in terms of loft. So what's interesting is ball speed actually came up a little bit. Right. Well, what's interesting too is that launch angle was, it was, I mean, 0 0.1 higher, mm -hmm. but you'd think it might be a little bit lower with the Mizuno. I right. think that's that lie angle of even the face Huge. just a little bit more open. I think we're gonna see that dispersion circle yeah. be pushed just a little bit to the left with the, yeah. with the Callaway versus the Mizuno. Yeah. Um, spin, so this is my first, Spin killer, I would say, that I would consider, considering it's 33 degrees of loft versus 32. Right. It was spinning less. Now, bull flight's gonna influence that, that a little too. True. But if you take a look at the attack angle, you'd think, if you hit down on it more, you're gonna spin the ball more. Right. Well, actually, I, I mean, we're talking, I'm trying to keep that attack angle around about negative one as we're testing. Yeah. I'm definitely not the player that hits down on it a lot with my irons. Right. But with less, with a, sorry, with a lower attack angle, mm -hmm. a steeper attack angle, mm -hmm. the ball still spun less. Less. So this is definitely a spin killer versus the Mizuno. Absolutely, that's why you have probably that four iron in there in your bag for that exact reason. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good one even off the tee to, to play and yeah. it goes, it fills the gap nicely in my bag. Yeah. 
Other, other numbers, um, height-wise, same thing, 113, 115. Uh, dynamic law of 23.2 and 23, so well done there. Yep. Really well done. Yeah, take a look at the dispersion real quick, just to yep. see. I feel like that, yeah, it was just turning over just a little bit easier for me. And I got mm -hmm. one shorter one with each, each right. there too, but you can see that, uh, yeah, it was going just a little bit further, even though the loft was a little bit weaker. Yeah, interesting. All righty. What is the title? It's T100S. Okay. It's heavy. Okay, Thomas. So I'm going to give you back the Mizuno 223. Yep. Again, it's just the newest to the channel. So I think we should kind of go each one compared to that since it's a new arrival. But wow, did that sound change again. It's right in, right in the middle between the three of them. I would agree. Very quiet with the Mizuno, very loud with the Callaway. <laughs> and now we're kind of back to that little muted, more muted sound, but right in the middle. Yes, yeah. yeah. So talk to me about visually looking down with these two irons now. Well, I can tell you without even looking at the two at the same time, the T100S was definitely the smallest of the three. Yep. It looks like the T100, but it's just got a little less loft in it. Yeah. On it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's looking down, it's, if you like a smaller club head, mm -hmm. it's definitely sleeker from heel to toe and sure. top line as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's see a couple more shots with it. That might be pretty far left. Okay, so sound was a, a lot better, more, more kind of close to kind of where we were with Mizuno. Right. Now, what we're seeing dispersion circle-wise is we're starting to make that ball turn over a little bit more. We started with Mizuno where the lie angle was flat at 61.5, came up a little bit, came up a little bit, and now we're starting to see that shape that you like to seeing. So talk to me about this one, T100S. Yeah, I feel like this club being just a little bit sleeker, a little less offset to it, makes it a little more workable okay. iron. Okay. And I do like to play that little drawer, mm -hmm. as opposed to the sleeve and the ball to the right. right. I did that for too long, and <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore in my life. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it, it felt really good off the okay. face. Yep. Looks extremely clean looking down at it. Definitely going to be the smallest one that we're going to be testing today, yep. club head look-wise. Um, just a clean looking iron that's a couple of degrees stronger than its T100. I'm sure. Let's see what Trackman has to say. Ball speed wise, we're still a little bit behind that Apex Pro with it being the highest lofted right. of the three so far, which is interesting. It is. But kind of that T100S fit right in between them in terms of ball speed wise. Yeah. Right in between. Another great option to knock a little bit of spin off. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing that Apex Pro is still with the lowest amount of spin and the highest ball speed. Right. Which so far out of three, knowing that it's got the most amount of loft on it, that mm -hmm. stands out to me. Yep. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's it's great across the board. I mean, the numbers with all them are very very good. Yeah. Um, I could you know I could play any of any of these three and be very happy with those numbers mm -hmm. if I'm looking for a little less spin. Right. Right. So we've got two more to go into. Uh, the next one, my guess might be a, another contender for low spin. This would be that Strixon ZX7. I think you might be onto something. Well, this actually looks quite different compared to the previous three. Okay. I'm noticing surface area. So the, the face area mm -hmm. is wider okay. as opposed to the others. There's more, I guess, toe area on the club. This, okay. this seems like the face area where the, where the grooves are expand across the face further. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hmm, that was better. Pick up the club speed here. <laughs> Out. Oh. 
There we go. Okay. So, a couple things. Sound was back to that kind of muted sound again. Yep. We did see, you know, kind of the, a couple swings in there where um, the swing speed was lower by about a little bit, we'll say that. But then the ball speed was hotter. And again, we're still at 32 degrees aloft there. So the explosive distance off this is incredible. Something to be noted for sure. Yeah, there was two in there that I got a 145, I believe, mm -hmm. on, the, on the smash factor. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that interest, that really stood out to me mm -hmm. is even though you notice the dispersion, yeah, it's left and right. Yeah. Now, that's on me. Right. That's not the club. Right. But notice how it's consistent. So it's not very far like this. It's Correct. actually pretty narrow. Yeah. So if I was going to hit a pull shot, I'm not going to get a fly away over the green. That's, and that's a what's big important. piece of this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what impressed me with this iron. Yeah, especially at you know some lower spin tendencies that we know that this iron has. You know, spin-wise, it's pretty similar to everything else so far. Mizuno is still kind of the king in terms of spin, but again, that was due to that lie angle a little bit flat, and yep. that, us leaving that face angle a little bit open there too. But otherwise, very similar performance here. We, do, we have a new leader in terms of distance at 185. Yeah, and then looking at that spin, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's low, but the consistency, yeah. right? Like that plus or minus number, even with yes. those pulls that I hit, mm -hmm. that was very consistent, which yeah. stood out to me. Yeah, which is great to have in a, in a scoring type iron like this. Right. Really good. So last one on the table, the P770, again, moving up to 33 degrees aloft here. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay, Thomas. So I heard you kind of talking right in the middle there. That's my concern. That's probably a due to spin, probably, right? And distance wise. Yeah, it was a little pull, the spin rate dropped, mm -hmm. carried 190 yards. That's, that's trouble. Yeah, that's that's long time. left. That is, I got to hit a super flop to try and get up and down, <laughs> and down there. Yeah. Sounds like you've heard that shot a time or two. <laughs> yeah, and I had, I had one there that I didn't quite catch, so it was the 182. Mm -hmm. But the, the 190 carry jumper yeah. was just my one that I was just a little bit of concern about. Right, yeah. right. And you know, dispersion wise, Again, still pretty darn good there. We're worried about the 190 flyer there, big time. Uh, but overall, you know, pretty nicely grouped. One with the, the well-struck shots, we know it's going to perform pretty darn well. Um, it did kind of compete with Strixon in terms of ball speed. It definitely did, and mm -hmm. it's also got 33 degrees loft on it. So True. it's highest lofted, but mm -hmm. I think that and Strixon were the ball speed leaders. Sure, let's take a yeah. look at track map. Strixon, standing tall. And the most consistent across yep. them all, right? So fastest and most consistent. Yep. And Tailor also made. the slowest club speed, too. It's very interesting to yep. point out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Moving our way up there. Uh, launch angle due to loft and weight of the shaft itself. Pretty consistent there. But again, Strixon, the lowest there. Um, but then Strixon was kind of in the middle in terms of spin, right? 373, it was actually the highest right right next to the Mizuno. So it launched the lowest, but it spun in the middle. Right. So very, yeah. very interesting there. Yeah, and I've, I've seen Strixon in the past. It, I've always liked to put it in, in the comparison when I've got mm -hmm. a customer because it has been a spin killer. Absolutely. Um, it's gonna be different for, it, for everybody, but the nice right. thing with the Strixon, it's got that VT sole on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna help with turf interaction. Yeah. If you catch a little behind the ball or if you catch coming a little bit too steep. Right. Now, I'm not a steep swinger, no. but that's where I would see it really work out to help knock the spin rate down. Right, I, I saw it too in the fitting bays all year long. Strixon's one of my favorites for that, but also because of the consistency of the spin. I mean, it was 
kind of top two in terms of consistency, or third, I think, on the list. 129 with Apex Pro, 130 with 100S from Titleist, and then 165 with Srixon. But we did, did see the most movement with Srixon, too. Right. So it being third on the list with the most movement really says something there. Yeah, that dispersion being left and right, as I mentioned, it's on me, but the right. fact that it was left and right and it was still pretty consistent, yes. that stood out as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, otherwise, look at, at numbers here. I mean, distance-wise, mm -hmm. we're talking highest carry with TaylorMade and Strixon. Yep. TaylorMade, we've, it's a low, it's a low spinning. The P seven seventy. Yeah. P seven ninety is even lower. Right. Um, they're, <laughs> right. they're hot. They're they're definitely hot. And I think the seven seventy is just like a little brother to the seven ninety. Yeah, that's just yeah. got to do with um, the width, heel to toe. Seven ninety being a little bit longer. Seven seventy just being a little bit narrower. That's where the numbers come from there. Yeah, so. yeah. So pretty low spin. Yep. As I mentioned, my concern was just that that jumper that I that I got. There was a little yeah. left, and then the one that was quite a bit shorter as well yeah. with the, with the misses. Yeah. So my consistency was a little bit off with that. Right. Um, it's gonna be player dependent as yep. well, but that was the only thing that I would say about the TaylorMade is it's gonna go far. It's gonna spin less, but at what right. sacrifice? Right. So you know to help kind of compensate the spin. You could always add a degree or two aloft, especially with the explosive ball speed with that too, just to help kind of manage that a little bit there too. Yep. But anything else jump out at you, Thomas, in terms of numbers? Yeah, I mean, my, my attack angle, what? I'm talking down one with all those, all the, we're talking between zero, negative 0 0.8, negative 1.6. Yep. Oh, within one degree, so that's, it's a fair to say that one is spinning more than the other or one's right. giving more ball speed than the right. other. Yeah. Uh, my dynamic loft range from 22.2 to 23.2. Mm -hmm. We know we've got a one degree difference here between these irons, so right. Right. there you go, right, right there. So, uh, pretty fair test. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would say if I'm going to summarize them on looks, mm -hmm. the T100S had the smallest look to it. Okay. I'd say then followed by the Callaway Apex Pro. Okay. Uh, so looks wise, probably smallest. And then at the other end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. we've got the Mizuno Pro 223. Mm -hmm. And then you've got um, your Srixon okay. that were kind of a little bit larger. And I talk about the Srixon just seeing a little bit more surface area, yeah, which is going to help probably with forgiveness there as well. And Absolutely. P770 was also in there just a little bit larger. Sure. So let's go splitting them up. Uh, feel wise, mm -hmm. Mizuno was softest. It, okay. it was, it clearly was the softest. Yeah. Um, the uh, Titleist T100S was also pretty soft. Okay. The Callaway Apex Pro was very loud. <laughs> yeah. um, however, based on my dispersion pattern and the numbers from mm -hmm. all the way across, like the plus or minus consistency numbers all the way across, yeah. I could get over that because I think it, right. it probably was right in the middle compared to all these irons here today mm -hmm. and was just consistent across the board. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, sound is gonna be amplified indoors. Outdoors, you're probably not gonna get a whole lot of that. I mean, you play in your four iron. Do you notice it outside when you play that? I don't really notice with the four iron, no. Exactly. I mean, I don't use the four iron all the time <laughs> either. Right. But it does, you know, it doesn't bother me. Yes, it's loud. Yeah. It, it's definitely louder than other models, and you. Sure. It's quite noticeable in inside. Okay. Um, but end of the day, you know, if my dispersion pattern is is good. Hey, mm -hmm. I'll. I'll hit it all day. <laughs> Absolutely. And then looking at the dis dispersion pattern here, you can see that the yellow was in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, tight this was in the middle. Yep. Those numbers, were, those were pretty good. Strixon surprised me. Me too. Left and right dispersion, not mm -hmm. so good. Now that's on me. Right. But the fact that it was north to south, very good. Yeah. That, that stood out. Because those two on the left, I would be concerned about them going up here. Yeah. Like kind of like this one here. A 190, 195 far. carry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what stood out to me. Explosiveness, P770 is explosive. Mm -hmm. Very, very explosive overall, considering it has the, one of the highest amount of lofts of them. Right, yeah. right. So overall, I think this was a great test, especially with the new addition of the family, the Mizuno Pro 223. So Thomas, thanks for taking the time and hitting the shots today. Guys, if you kind of saw, like what you saw here, smash that like button. Let us know what irons interest you most going into 2022.